Good morning, YouTube. Decided to uh, take a little drive up to Sedona today. Hit a couple trails. I got my got my little off-road trailer behind us. The Forerunner's filthy. It's unwashed. We had snow yesterday. It's a mess. And you know what? I decided, why not? Let's do a review. Let's do an honest review on this 2020 TRD Pro Forerunner in army green and uh, I'm gonna give you my my thoughts it's got 2417 miles on it. coming from a 2018 the 2018 was my first uh, forerunner and I absolutely loved it quite honestly I would have never traded it for another forerunner unless Toyota did what Toyota did when Toyota announced the 2020s with the safety sense upgrades the apple carplay remote start push button start automatic climate control and most importantly for me is the radar cruise control i'm going to give you my honest review of this and i'll let you know if it was worth it was it worth premium that I paid for a TRD Pro. Now let's face it, I paid a lot of money for a paint job, essentially. Okay, let's do a little walk around the Forerunner now. And I'll point out some of the things that changed and mostly everything stayed the same. And down here in the grill area, this is for the radar cruise control. Still got the TRD Pro skid plate. They didn't update the headlights. Though you do have LED fog lights. Those are nice. Both sides have sensors and door handle for the keyless entry. I love not having to take the key out. I know, first world problems, right? TRD Pro wheels wrapped in Nitto Terra Grappler 26570 17 inch tires. Pretty decent tread, they work. The TRD Pro exhaust, it exits out the side. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you is anybody that's had a Forerunner knows that if you have the back window down, you get exhaust smell. Guess what? You still get exhaust smell. TRD. Coming around to the back side, on the 20s, you have two buttons. And you can actually pull the window down, pull the window back up, just by having the key in your pocket. Also, when you come around to the back, you can unlock the hatch and reveal terrible, terrible mess. Sorry, guys recovery gear sleeping bag compressor and such and uh, nice microfiber towels for trying to keep this green machine clean nothing new up here for the 20s besides the army green the racks the same Let's see if we can get a, a look under here we got the box coilovers I'll tell you one thing this thing rides wonderful it has a great ride but it does pretty darn good for a stock rig You'll notice we're pulling the little off-road trailer today and it seems like it gets about 15 and a half miles per gallon so far pulling this trailer so about the same as my lifted one did this trailer weighs around a thousand pounds once it's loaded with stuff it's not a very heavy trailer Toyota didn't do the blindside mirrors in this. For whatever reason, I don't have blindside mirrors. I don't have turn signals in the mirrors. And you don't have the cool little uh, parking lights that shine down on the ground, which those are kind of nice. And you would think they would have loaded it up with those. Fake hood scoop. One thing I will note about this paint is if you're going to wheel it, and I've been really careful. This is this is one of the first vehicles that I've been really 
really careful about trying not to scratch. But this thing scratches if you look at it sideways. It is not an easy paint color to keep nice. Paint is soft and it's going to scratch. You're going to have scratches. It's shiny, it looks beautiful when it's clean. It's, it's one of the prettiest vehicles I've ever had. Um, and I haven't pinstriped it yet. Not bad, I've been really careful. And uh, it's got scratches. That being said, the 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser I looked at yesterday that was sitting on the showroom floor that's never been anywhere was scratched. So Toyota really needs to step up the game on their paint. It, it's the one thing I don't like about Toyota. Now, but let's face it, for a $50,000 vehicle, you gave me a $15,000 car paint job. But it's pretty. See here? That's what I'm talking about. It's just so easy to scratch. I've had it for a few months now, so I'm about ready just to do it in and enjoy it because what I bought it for. I didn't buy it for resale. I didn't buy it to try to make money on it. I bought it to use it and it's going to break my heart when I start really pinstriping it. But hey, it is what it is. I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves so far about this system here. And we're going to take the phone and we're going to plug it in. One of the things that I don't like is you have to plug the phone in. It doesn't work via Bluetooth to use Apple CarPlay, but whatever, that's fine. Push button start, wonderful, looks great. Okay, we're plugged in to Apple CarPlay. The head unit's gonna go through its little displays, it does its thing, lets us know we're in a Toyota. Oh my goodness, we've gotta drive safely and obey all of the traffic rules. So the music starts. I can play uh, YouTube music we're playing the text messaging the text messaging on this works wonderful it is fantastic it dictates well I've got a variety of things I can use I use Waze an awful lot so a lot of times I like to get waves now you've got a little microphone up in the right hand corner you can tap that it's listening find coffee near me all right, searching for coffee. Okay, so the text messaging works beautiful. The music plays, for the most part, it plays 90% of the time, which is pretty impressive for a Toyota uh, head unit. Phone calls, however, let's, let's make a phone call, okay? still plugged into Apple CarPlay. We go over here, go over to the phones, the call. We make some phone calls right now. We're gonna make a phone call. All right. You hear how it's cutting out? Hello. 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 Okay. So you see now, it just put him on hold. <laughs> What'll happen now is this thing will just start calling random people in my phone. And if I go to hang up, just put them on hold. It does not work. I have not been able to make a phone call connected to Apple CarPlay. Not one time. Not one time since I've had this car. Okay. <laughs> it's really annoying because I like to use the Apple CarPlay. It's nice to have. But here's how you have to make a phone call. Disconnect your USB from the Apple CarPlay. Now it will switch over to Bluetooth. Now we'll try this phone call again. Old school Bluetooth, right? You'll see, it works great. It works just like my old 2018 Forerunner worked. It works flawlessly, but we're not connected to Apple CarPlay now. Hey, did you even hear me when I called you the first time? Because it instantly put you on hold and started dialing other people in the contacts and the phone just freaked out. Uh, what do you mean the first time? This is the fourth time you've called. 
Right. So the very first time? See. <laughs> when you called and said you were See what it call? does, what it does. So what it does is I'll call and then they'll put you on hold and then they'll redial the phone again. And then you got like three or four phone calls going on. The Apple CarPlay does not work. I cannot wow. make a phone call with this $50,000 vehicle. I'm talking to you old school like you would in your Tacoma, like I would in my 2018 Forerunner. The Apple CarPlay does not work. If I plug my phone into the system, I can't make a phone call. If somebody calls me while I'm listening to music, I have to unplug the damn thing. I have to wait about 10 seconds for it to come back over to Bluetooth, and then I can receive the call. It's not a great. <laughs> Thanks for being a guest on my channel. And, uh, hey, maybe, pleasure I, was all mine. Hey, and for the record, for the record, this I haven't been to the dealer yet for the first service, but this is one of the things I'm going to bring up. But for the record, I am running the latest iOS, and I do have an iPhone 11 Max. But my phone's not an antique, and my operating system's not either. So it's the head unit, which is a 2020. This thing's a month old. It should work. You, you would think it would work. It should work. It should work. It's one of the reasons. It's one of the reasons I bought a 2020. It's one of the reasons I upgraded and I can't make a phone call to save my life. All right. So you saw that. That doesn't work. All right. Now that we know that the Apple CarPlay doesn't work, we'll show you some of the other features Toyota have updated. Still got the auto dimming mirror and you've got your crawl control and all your various A track locker. This I haven't tried out. Now this is supposed to work like OnStar and I think you hit this and you can call somebody for an emergency. I'm not sure. Steering wheel, very similar to the previous years. A couple little deals here. Now these are buttons for the lane departure warning and your radar cruise control so this will let you set your distance still got the old school uh, cruise control stock this is one of my favorite features though I do love the fact that I can just keep the key fob in my pocket and just come up here and hit a button she'll fire up it's wonderful now the stereo is not so wonderful see we've it's got to go through its whole thing. It's not great. It's not great. This, however, works pretty decently. Climate control. I like. I like that. I like the dual zone climate. I like the dual zone climate control. Um, here's the USB port for the Apple CarPlay. Still got the big old school knobs up here for your AC control. Nice knob for the radio. I like that. Got all your apps up here. Just nice. I mean, it's it's nice in theory, but it doesn't work well at all. It's it's just really not great. You know, I'm, I'm, I, that's that's one of the major disappointments I have with this this car. Um, and it was one of the reasons I I bought. Move over to the screen here 16 miles per gallon that's not bad right it's pulling the trailer it's decent um you've got a whole bunch of different things that's a nice feature right there that is cool um, i like the fact that it shows you your actual tire pressure and no they're not two, two psi apart right side of the vehicle's in the shade left side's in the sun they are all equalized i just checked them this morning moving on we've got a nice compass holy mackerel everybody needs a compass right you've got your radio station display in here go through the presets little Sirius XM temperature outside lane departure assistant and the pre-collision we've got settings for all that and in here we've got shows your distance to empty as well as your overall average miles per gallon and 
this is after the reset yesterday when I fueled, and this is after start. And obviously we haven't moved anywhere, so 0 0.0, 0, 0 0.0. Nothing really super fancy, you know, for a brand new vehicle, not super fancy. Nothing's really changed here. Uh, still got this cubby hole that I have no idea what it does. Uh, this one apparently will hold the spare battery for the cell phone. Got cup holders. Wow. They don't fit anything. The interior's not changed a whole lot. I thought it was kind of cool. I never had a vehicle that had this, but you got your high beams, right? Right, automatic high beams, that's nice. The uh, automatic headlights work well, they're great. Now, you got auto high beams, turn that on. And these things in theory should cycle on and off. Just the same way you would cycle them on and off manually. They do not. They lag, they turn off at the wrong time and they turn on at the wrong time and they will flash drivers. <laughs> They'll turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. They're terrible. The automatic high beams are terrible. Another thing worth mentioning, radar cruise control. Works good, works really good. It does. The thing that annoys me most about the radar cruise control is it cuts off at 28 miles per hour. Now, it would be really nice if it went down to zero. I Honestly, that's what I expected when I bought this. I was disappointed when I saw it kicks off at 28 miles per hour. But even more ridiculous is, why not give me 25? If you're not gonna give me zero or 10, why not 25? Why not, why can't I set my cruise at 25 in a 25 mile an hour zone. Why, why can't I? So I'm hoping Toyota has a software update at some time in the future. I hope there's enough people that complain about that particular aspect of this cruise control. Cause there are cars out there that go down to zero and it's fantastic. This thing, 28 miles an hour, it beeps, cruise control cancels, you take over. Pretty annoying for the amount of money I spent on this truck because that was one of the reasons I bought it. All right, so I know it sounds like I've done a lot of bitching and that's how I always come off, I, I do, because sometimes I'm a negative person. So what's the bottom line? Do I love this thing or do I hate it? Do I have buyer's remorse or do I not? I do not have buyer's remorse. I absolutely love the color and that was one of the reasons I went with the TRD Pro, I absolutely love the way this thing drives. The Fox coilovers and Fox shocks gives you a wonderful ride. Uh, the small bumpy stuff soaks up. The big stuff, it soaks up. It does really well. Um, I'm super happy with it. If it was a factory two or three inch lift, holy cow, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. But the way it sits stock, I'm happy with it. The other reasons I mentioned that I went with a 20 and dumped the 18, I'm a little disappointed. I am. I'm, I'm quite frankly bummed about the, the stereo. It doesn't sound great. The JBL system, it doesn't sound great. It doesn't. It's not a great sounding system. There's nothing great about it. You've got a space in the dash that not a lot of things are gonna fit in there, so you're kind of stuck with the factory system. The Apple CarPlay, huge disappointment. The mere fact that I have to plug it in and use USB instead of just Bluetooth, that's ridiculous. Uh, it doesn't work for making phone calls. It works okay for playing music. It works really good for for uh, dictating text messages. I will give it that. It works fantastically for dictating text messages, which obviously you should be texting and driving continuously. That, that's what you should be when you're behind the wheel. But that, that does work. The cruise control, disappointing, 28 miles per hour. What a random useless speed that is. 
28 miles per hour. Hopefully that can be fixed with a software update in the future. I'm hoping enough people will complain about it because there's there's no reason for it. There's absolutely no reason for it. Yeah. Headlights, I wish Toyota would have updated the headlights. It would have been wonderful for Toyota to have LED headlights in this thing. These headlights are an embarrassment. The fog lamps, very nice, very nice. Here's another thing that, that I just wish Forerunner would have put in because there's a lot of manufacturers, including Toyota themselves, they've done it with the Tacoma, they've done it with other platforms. They've got cameras in the front, cameras in the mirror, cameras in the back, it gives you a nice 360 degree view. This is an off-road vehicle. People use them to go off-road. It would be really awesome to be able to see your surroundings. I mean, since the technology is available and you're charging a premium for this thing, you know, how about it, Toyota? I'm very happy with the color of this vehicle. I'm happy with the way it drives. It's a pleasure to drive. I don't get bored driving it. I do love this 4Runner. I loved my 2018. I love this 4Runner. At the end of the day, I'm very happy with it, and I think we're going to be together for quite some time. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention is let's, let's talk about the TRD Pro Exhaust that this thing comes with. Now, it's a 270 horsepower V6 engine. It's not going to sound amazing, but you do hear the exhaust in this thing and it's noticeable the whole time you're driving it. It sounds okay, but at the end of the day, it just doesn't sound like a $50,000 car. with the exhaust it should have been an I don't know but it is noticeable you can hear it the whole time you're driving you are aware that there is a more open exhaust no performance gains from it though there's zero performance advantage this thing doesn't have any more power because of that exhaust bottom line is I love this forerunner I'm still a Toyota fanboy. And uh, guys, I really do appreciate you watching my insanity. I know I go off on just sideways. Like, oh, here, let's look at it. Oh, shiny thing. Let's talk about that. I know. I know. I do appreciate you guys watching, though. I really do. So if you haven't liked and subscribed to the channel, I wish you would. Because one thing you don't know, and I don't either. You never know when a new video is going to pop up. Could be a couple times a week. Might be once a month. I don't know, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great day.